All right, and welcome back, guys. So today is going to be my first official AVGO content-related video. I'm going to be covering the top five gods to watch for this patch in the AVGL. Um, it's not really going to be as top five as much as best god per role, so there will end up being five gods, but they're not really going to be ranked against one another since it will just be one god per role. So we're going to start this off. And going to be looking to that support lane first, that support role. Um, the god we're going to be watching for this week is going to be that Athena pickup. Um, this is one of the best supports in Season 5, uh, every patch so far. Not only can she, uh, really it's because of this alt, the uh, Defender of Olympus, and that Confound Taunt. The ability to pretty much be able to go to any ally on the map at any time, as long as you have that ultimate up, is insane right now. Athena has the ability to change a team fight like no other god can. To just alt in in like a 2v1 situation, all of a sudden make it a 2v2, it's crazy. And not only that, it's really the other thing too is that taunt. Having the ability to taunt multiple enemies uh, and lock them under up, up to a 2 second stun or CC is just really good so the combination of being able to alt in and then just cc people she can just completely change the pace of a team fight so quickly um makes her really strong now she does suffer a little bit in build you don't see her building some of these items like the you know gauntlet of thieves heartward amulet and cyber tail like you do see some of these other supports so while she may not get as much health as some of these other supports we do see um she kind of makes up for that by going for these higher protection items with cooldown reduction so like the blessed plate of valor and the mantle of discord or the spirit robe um so while she does lack that health that cooldown reduction and extra protections help her quite a bit to be able to alt in and help her teammates and have that alt up and that taunt up more frequently to make her a much more effective support so that's really why we're going to be seeing her um in you know that kind of top spot for the support right now just that ability to change the pace of a team fight so quickly and kind of come out of nowhere makes her so strong uh now we're going to look to the adc role and for that my personal pick is going to be as soon as i find him the who ye who ye is in a he's always been a very comfortable pick for a lot of people um, never seen him kind of go into that lower tier, less picked. He's always kind of up, up there. He's always an option. You can always, you know, expect to see a Hu Yi at least one set, at least one, you know, game, you know, in a, in a tournament or in a league or something like that. So really, you know, unsurprising that he's, you know, kind of, you know, resurged into that top position, but really it's not about how he builds. Um, it really comes down to his abilities and how they affect the map. We see, especially, it's especially with the Ricochet and the Sunbreaker, of course. And, you know, having a jump is always nice, but we're looking to that Ricochet and that Sunbreaker. With how much the jungle has changed, a lot of players don't know how Huyi's bounces work in the new jungle. They don't know where he can bounce, how far his bounces can go, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, the ability, a, a good Huyi player can take advantage of that like crazy. And just be able to hit people with bounces they did not see coming at all. Burst them down for a lot of health. Um, so he can definitely take advantage of that kind of new jungle. And take advantage of all the new areas that he can bounce in and catch people off guard. Not only that, you know, besides being a, a strong ADC with a lot of damage. He has that Sunbreaker ultimate. Not only is it great objective secure. You can throw that down on a Gold Fury. Or a, a Fire Giant. Or even a Pyromancer. But... It's also great area of denial, which, especially with the new jungle, can be very useful. He can just take any area of the jungle and say, nope, I don't want you to walk here anymore. And you can't. So not only can it be used aggressively to secure the objectives, but it can also be used defensively to deny people from going to certain areas. Or even aggressively, again, to wall people off from escaping certain areas. So definitely, who ye very strong pickup right now. Again, just besides being... One, a, a great damage ADC. He has that ability, the, those two abilities that really, with the new jungle, allow him to kind of move up to the next level. Moving on, we're going to go to the mid lane. Um, and for this, I'm going to be picking Agni as my top pick. 
again, um, you know, build isn't as important with him. Um, but he does build some of those strong mage items really well. He can build Warlock Stash very effectively. We see him building Gem of Isolation sometimes, which can also be super effective on him. He's able to build those strong mage items. Again, Bancroft's Talent's another one. Um, super well. Allow him to do a lot of burst damage. Be able to burst people down very quickly. Um, but not only that, it's it's again, it's his kit. It's though it really we look to the noxious fumes and that ultimate, the rain fire. Um Pretty much being able to have three ultimates up every, uh, you know, fairly regularly, especially with cooldown reduction, makes him really strong. And these are very safe ultimates, too. It's not like he has to put himself out of position too far to deal a lot of damage. He can kind of sit back and poke people out like a piece of artillery. And then combine that with the Noxious Fumes. Great CC, able to pretty much throw that down. It's a big AoE stun. Can stun out multiple people. So as long as he you know, throws that out and catches them with that, or he can catch them with a Flame Wave, or that Path of Flames even, or that Rain Fire, he can you know, stun people out and then you know, burst them down with the Rain Fire, with the Flame Wave, doing tons of damage. Not only that, but even his other two abilities are very strong. Flame Wave is great clear, especially with minions doing less damage. It allows him to get a little bit closer if he needs to to really, you know, hit the full wave with that flame wave. And then, of course, he has the Path of Flames, which, although the cooldown is a little high on that, as long as he builds a little bit of cooldown reduction, it's a very safe, reliable dash that he has that he can stun someone out with over the Noxious Fumes, too, making it even safer. So, definitely a very strong pickup because of that kit. Um, you know, we've seen him played very well already in Season 5, so I would not be surprised to see him, you know, take that top spot in the mid for the first time in a long time. Finally, we're going to move on to that jungle, and this is this is a role that has been very up in the air. It's definitely one of these, you know, if you can do well in the jungle, if you have your jungler do well, that can completely just carry a game. The jungle is really that top spot right now. It's a spot everybody's watching. Um, we saw it in the SPL games in the past two days, and we've seen it in the AVGL games over the past couple of weeks. The jungler can make or break a game. It's really that top spot, the spot everybody is watching. So for me, it's going to have to be Arachne. Um, and I know a lot of people w would disagree with me on this one. Um, they would say something like the Sarket or the Nemesis, which are both very strong picks. But Arachne is really vi so strong right now. Not only does she have great lifesteal off of that Venomous Bite, um, really what we're looking to is the Cocoon and the web. They buffed the web back towards the beginning of Season 5, so now she can have up to three at a time, which is really strong. She can set those as traps. Not only do they slow people, but they speed her up. So she can, you know, the ability for her to chase down, especially squish your targets like ADCs or mid laners, is insane right now. And her single target, target damage with the Cocoon is crazy right now. Able to stun out a single target and then just shred them. She's one of the hardest gods to brawl against right now, especially with that healing. So she's, you know, definitely one of the strongest 1v1 gods right now, which is really kind of what you want in that jungler. Team fighting is important, but if you're able to pick up those squishy targets like the mid lane or like the ADC, take them out of the fight and then just kind of move your way along, um, you know, can't be beat. And not only that, she has the safety of the Nightcrawler ultimate. Um, you know, not the highest damage ultimate, but the ability to escape and have that CC immune ultimate always very nice. And she can build very effectively. We see her building, you know, very, you can build her kind of brawly with a mix of protections and maybe some power items. Or you can build her kind of that shred build. We see her building like the... the uh, Heartseeker and, and the Titan's Bane and then just shredding these, you know, squishier targets and even some of these tankier targets like the solo liners. Um, so very strong pickup on that Arachne. Uh, great mobility as well. So, you know, although not everyone would agree with me, I see her being that, that kind of top jungle and I can't wait to see what she's able to do with this new jungle. And then finally, we get to my personal favorite lane, the lane I main. It's going to be the solo lane. And for the solo lane, I'm going to be picking Kukulin. Um, Again, this is a god that hasn't seen the best play in the AVGL. Um, very strong in Season 4 when he was released and, and, and all the way up to the end of Season 4. But 
season five has seen a bit of a downwards, you know, not so much a downwards spiral, but he's kind of on the downslope as of late. But I think he's still one of the strongest, you know, in my opinion, the strongest soul laner in the game right now. And really, you know, besides, we're going we're gonna to start with his abilities, and, and really it's the eight abilities. Being able to have three abilities and then, you know, two more plus the, you know, eternal, you know, vet anger and the two CC ultimates um, makes him really strong. Uh, he has insane pressure, especially in the early game in that like level two, level three range. Because once he get, if he gets the guy up in that early game, you know, spot and catches someone out, it's a definite first blood. We've seen it again and again. If you if you let him hit level two, level three, get that rage form up, and then you know, burst someone, you know, and you're caught out of position, you're losing to Kakoa no matter what, pretty much. Um, so really having all those abilities. Is, is what makes him so strong. Not only that, he gets a nice little shield on, on that rage form, so he can, you know, put even more pressure on, help to dive a little bit. And then, of course, we, you know, see him building, again, some of those strong uh, soul lane items like the Stone of Gaia. We see him building very well. Breastplate of Valor, Mystical Mail. He can also build Emperor's Armor um, or, you know, Hide of the Nemean Lion. He can pretty much build any soul lane uh, item, you know, protection item that we see very effectively. So he's very versatile. Um, but I think the reason he's kind of been on that downward slope in the AVGL especially is people just aren't properly timing that rage form. You can't pop it when you're in the middle of the jungle. Uh, no one's around you and you're not even clearing camps. You need it to be, you know, I think if players just waited better timed that use the vet anger more effectively and then you know when they want to fight when they want to push they have it you know right on the cusp so all they have to hit is one ability and they turn into that rage form i think we would see kakon do a little bit better so i'd like to see you know it as long as people start to you know time that rage form more effectively i definitely think we could see kakon become that top you know solo laner like we've seen him do again and again in the past so definitely, I think all they all that people really need to do is just take advantage of that rage form, time it more properly, and you know, it, it's it's a wrap. He'll do so well. So really, that's that's about it for the top five gods that we're going to be watching for in the AVGL. Now, of course, I'm going to you know give a couple honorable mentions. So really, you know, the big ones for me are Bologna in the solo lane. Again, you know, she was a top pick back in season four, and again is has been in season five. Builds those soul lane items like breastplate of valor, um, pestilence so effectively. Has a CC ultimate and the ability to stop basic attacks with that scourge, and the shield bash makes her very effective. And then really the only other one I would like to mention would would, would be the Habwa. This is a god we've seen banned out. Uh, you know, again and again, he has a, I would say probably the highest ban rate uh, in the AVGL so far. I think I've only seen him actually make it through once or twice in a game so far. Um, but very strong god, especially with the the damage minions that do is now less than it used to be, allows him to get forward and, and use that water cannon more effectively. Uh, and then of course he has that Atlas of the Yellow River, the carpet. You know pretty much immune to slows beautiful for an entire team, not just his himself, but the entire team, um, which is insane right now. So he's definitely, you know, besides Agni, I'd say he's the other top pick, but he's going to be one of my honorable mentions this time around. So other than that, uh, you know, tomorrow's the first stream. So I hope to see you all or the, you know, first stream of the week. So I hope to see you all Thursday o'clock at 7 p.m. Um, I'll be casting alongside the lovely freight train, of course. So catch us there and, and hopefully we'll get to see some of these gods we talked about today, uh, really shine. So on that, the Seleucus signing out.